So he said he has pathological disease. Now, if you're pathological, there's no cure for that, folks. Okay? There's no cure for that. And I did one of the shows today. And I don't want to say what I said, but I'll tell you anyway. I said that if you're a child molester, a sick puppy, you're a child molester, there's no cure for that. There's only one cure. We don't want to talk about that cure. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rick Blackwell in for Ed Berliner. Welcome to The Hardline. Everyone's talking about Donald Trump's tirade in Iowa. Smart politics, or in the words of an influential conservative radio host, the most embarrassing nine minutes from a GOP presidential candidate. Well, to talk Trump, Carson and the state of the race were joined by Republican strategist and professor at Georgetown University, Bradley Blakeman, and joined by veteran political commentator, columnist, and the news director of the Tea Party News Network, Scotty Nell Hughes. And Bradley, let's get right to it. Will this latest outburst hurt the Trump campaign? And beyond that, does it hurt the Republican brand? Well, it certainly hurts the Republican brand. I mean, th this kind of talk is stream of consciousness, if you can put it, Donald Trump consciousness, which is I don't believe is in the consciousness of most Americans, Republican, Democrat, or otherwise. Uh, but it's not really a wise move to insult the very voters that you want to vote for you, calling the people of Iowa stupid, calling Americans stupid. Um, I have to imagine that Trump goes back to his, his jet, his mansion every night, and says, I can't believe I'm still leading after everything I'm saying. What more do I have to say to get out of this thing? But it's certainly not helpful to the brand. I can't believe it's going to help him. But let's see what the polls do. Scotty, no, let's get into it because, you know, we people love Donald Trump for speaking his mind. They appreciate his honesty. So, in other words, are we going to see a bump in the polls as a result of these comments? Well, I don't think it, whether it's a bump in the, in the poll or not because the comments is necessarily the issue. I think the issue is that while these conversations might seem kind of awkward, kind of embarrassing to say up on a national stage, they relate to people because you know those kind of comments are being made in living rooms and kitchen tables across the country. People are going, wait a minute, how is there a guy that's even up in the polls of the GOP who is only known because of his violent tendencies his lack of anger management, this guy's sitting at number two, possibly number one in the state of Iowa. We don't know anything about his policies because every time he makes it the headline, it's because he did something violent in his past. I think that's why Mr. Trump, is, it's, not, it's not Mr. Trump that's putting him in the headlines. It's Ben Carson that continues to use this as his track record, and hence why Mr. Trump continues to have to talk about it. Well, Bradley, comment on that. Is it true that that Donald Trump is just basically echoing what people are saying in their dining rooms, in their kitchens, in their living rooms on a nightly basis? Not in my dining room, not, in, <laughs> not the friends I talk with. Uh, it's quite the contrary. We're talking about the stupidity of a guy who can be so wealthy and, and be successful in business, yet be so completely out of touch and, and uh, delusional. Um, if anybody <laughs> needs a medical diagnosis, I think it's Trump. Um, but having said that, it, 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 look, Carson's story is about redemption. It's about a kid who grew up in poverty and grew up in violence who turned his life around. I understand that, and it's a shame Mr. Trump does not. Ben Carson was able to take a negative and spin it into a positive. The guy got the Medal of Freedom. He, he was able to operate for the first time on conjoined twins. He's a fantastic surgeon, a man of accomplishment, and to be mocked, for, for turning his life around is really a sad commentary on the guy who was born with a silver foot in his mouth. Scotty, now I want to get your comment. I want to get your comment on that real quick, but also want to play this bite from Trump. And this looked kind of, it was, this was interesting when he's bashing the intelligence of Iowans. Let's first hear from that. Hear that. How stupid are the people of Iowa? How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? So here's the good news. He's now saying all of that stuff happened because otherwise he's a liar. Well, Scotty Nell, what do you think? I mean, it's one thing to talk about Ben Carson, but it can't be good politics to question the intelligence of people who will be voting either for or against you on February 1st. Okay, well, let me start off with what the great professor said. First of all, you know, sure, it might be not be talking about around your kitchen table, but the reason why it's, being talk it's talking about a bunch of people because Donald Trump's number one. And the folks that relate to you, Professor, 
are at the bottom of the poll. So obviously there are a lot of people no, that are actually like scratching the their heads. Hold on. I let you talk. Number one. Number two. Uh, the reason why Donald, you know, you want to sit there, and I agree, insults him and saying they're stupid. Mr. Trump is more importantly reflecting to the people that continuously are following Dr. Charson, even though they don't have any idea about the policies. They're not questioning that the logic does not make sense here. And the only reason that we're sitting here and talking about these issues is because Dr. Carson was not accurate in everything, all the facts that he said in his book that brought this up. So, Mr. Trump did not make this go on national headlines. What made this go on national headlines is there was indiscrepancy and the truth between books that were written and sold as the truth, and Dr. Carson coming back and saying, well, it might not have happened like that. I can't remember. Let's That's let's the reason why we're talking place. about this. Let's All right, talk Bradley, about go ahead. Let's talk about misconception and, and falsehoods. How about Trump with his imaginary friend, Mr. Putin, somebody who's, who he's never even met, yet if you listen to him, they're best friends, and they were on 60 Minutes together. They were on the oh 60 Minutes God. program. But two different segments. They never met each other. They don't know each said, other. That's what he said. That was, do you not have a sense oh, of humor? Obviously no, not. Even though it's a joke, of, what you did. It was later, did you that see that when he they said were it? Together. He, no, he said, oh, yeah, because we were in the green room together. That was the whole joke because his segments were on right back and forth. Oh, he's a so joke. Mr. Trump he's a never joke. meant that as to be taken literally, which people like See, yourself, that's the problem. obviously we don't, don't have know what Mr. Humor. Trump actually means. All right, let me well, jump in. You know, Scotty, now let me jump in there, there real so quick. He was never going to get your vote anyway. So that's why you took him literally on that comment. All right, Scotty, now let me jump in because you still didn't answer the question. At some point, okay. is he going over the line, though, when he questions the intelligence of the voters in Iowa? Are there some things that he is saying that may be just too much right now for the Republican voter out there? Listen, let me say this. Here's, here's the thing with Mr. Trump. You have to remember this. Since the last debate, he has spent more time in the media. He's been more time on the ground. He's had more rallies with thousands of people at it. He has not taken a second yet. And what he's heard time and time again is how frustrated people are with excuses. With all of these candidates giving these excuses as to why they failed or why did they, you know, were, were, had problems growing up or are they, all it is is excuses. Mr. Trump is tired of these excuses, just like the American people are tired of the excuses of Washington, D.C. And all he says, is, guys, just logically think it out. It doesn't make sense. Time and time again, excuses are just, why don't people take accountability for their own problems, like Mr. Trump has done and said, you know what, I changed. This is why I felt this way. You're never seeing that out of any of these other candidates. You know, Bradley, it's interesting because when you, when you hear Donald Trump, you think this is just coming off the top of his head. I want to play his campaign ad that will show that these comments were pretty calculated when they're going when he's going after Ben Carson. I had a large camping knife and I, I tried to stab him in the abdomen. What? Does it fit with the guy who you knew? No. This appears to be a well-thought-out campaign by the Trump people. Now, Ben Carson, in response, says, I'm hopeful that maybe his advisors will help him to understand the word pathological and recognize that that does not denote incurable. It's not the same. So Ben Carson fighting back in some ways. But, you know, this leads, Bradley, to a lot of people in the GOP establishment even today in the Washington Post, still bringing up the name of Mitt Romney to run. At some point, are we at that stage where people in the GOP establishment are so concerned with the top two candidates right now that they're looking for an outside candidate? No, I mean, don't we have enough people running? I mean, look, there's enough quality, hey, quality candidates on that stage. What's going to happen, in my opinion, is people are going to get tired of Donald Trump sooner rather than later. Uh, I think that uh, 2015 will be the year of the outsider in 2016 will be the year of the insider. Something like Marco Rubio, who has a mass appeal across the board beyond the party and also can help with Hispanic votes. And more importantly, Florida. Florida is a must win state for Republicans. So let's do the math. And the best possible candidate is one who's actually going to help us win an election. Scotty, now I'm okay, going to give you the last word. And I want to get your opinion on what you think right now. All this discussion, Carson going after Trump, Trump going after Carson, if it takes away from the real issues and it ultimately is hurting the voter out there. Well, let me just say this. First of all, we will agree. I do think Rubio is good. However, if you ever want Rubio to be president, never call him an insider ever again. I promise you, you put more of a dark mark on him when you call him an insider or establishment. Please, on behalf of the Rubio campaign, don't ever call him that again. Second of all, uh, 
the other side of 2015, the reason, you know, the reason why we're having this backlash is because of what's happened on within Washington, D.C. I do think that this actually does well because you have to remember, we're not talking about just GOP voters here. We're talking about independents, people that are normally not engaged in politics, that are paying attention thanks to names like Trump and Carson and even Carly. So I, I don't think that it hasn't happened yet. He's been on top of the polls longer than any other presidential candidate has been, number one. Get used to it. Trump is here to stay. If you want to take him down, you're going to need to get all the other establishment candidates out. Scotty Nell Hughes, we're going to have to leave it right there. Bradley Blakeman, thank you so much for your comments as well. Always interesting. And when we return, Ed Berliner talks to former House Intelligence Committee Chairman Pete Hoekstra about the architects of disaster, the destruction of Libya. Libya, it's coming up on The Hardline with Ed Berliner.